Welcome to TortleCast with your hosts, Alexander McKegg and Jason Rigby, where humanity steps into the future and source data defines the path. The path. Kelp. Kelp. Triberius. Yeah. <laughs> Niacin. Yeah. I, we're not, I know we look cold in here. I'm not sure it is cold or we're just so. We took some supplements. Jacked up on <laughs> some those. herbal supplements. Yeah. That, and I don't know what they did. Like opened up the uh, amount of oxygen flowing through <laughs> us right now. I'm just like, whoa. Yeah. So we're, we're a little jacked here. I'm really jacked up. Speaking of being jacked up. Yeah. The tourism industry that is needs, jacked up. It needs to be, it's jacked up right now. Someone needs to fix that. <laughs> yeah. So recently what we've seen is that uh, there's been a decline in revenue of the tourism industry of like a <clears throat> hundred, what is it? A hundred billion? Yeah. A hundred billion dollars. hundred billion dollars. I know it's probably some, you know, very, uh, you know, some liberal, not in a political sense, but you know, it's probably just like a high estimate. Right. And then uh, how many jobs? 39 was, million? Yeah, it was uh, it was millions of jobs. Yeah. yeah, it was millions of jobs because of like COVID, right? Right. Tourism is all about interaction with people and cultures. Right. And so they need to find a way to, you know, prop that back up. It's a mess right now. And <laughs> so it's like, how do we... <laughs> <laughs> it's a mess right now. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> it's a mess. It's a total mess. And so when the tourism industry is like, well, how are people's habits changing? Right. So they've been going through and they've been using, uh, you know, large data sets, big data to run analyses for business intelligence to figure out, well, where are people headed? What do they want to do now that is a function of safe practices, but allows them to give their, you know, their, their function of travel and experience where it needs to be, right? Especially in this time. So a couple of the examples that were talked about in this article where they were looking at the ecotourism. Right. So backpackers. Right. You know, or people that, you know, ride the bus to like go around and check out different countries, things of that nature. How do you, how do you accommodate those people in the growth in that sector of people wanting to be outside, do things a little bit more uh, rugged right. than and, we're used to? Yeah, like, uh, and then being a part of nature. Yeah, being a part you of nature. How does, how does tourism move itself towards those sort of functions, practices, and services so they can benefit those people that are in the ecotourism sector. Yeah, and when you when you look at, I'm looking at the article right now, when you look at it, you can, uh, one of the big things that it's talking about is having a home away from home. Yeah. So where, where it's cleaned and it's safe, you know, and I know Airbnb has responded to that in a really good way. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, and people are even willing to pay a little bit more as long as it's a safe environment that they can be in. Yeah, and let's think about a very specific um, uh, socioeconomic group people that ski and snowboard. Yeah. What you find is that all the people are flocking to their lodge homes. Those mm. wealthier people. Right. I got to get out of the city area and I just want to hang in an isolated area. Yeah. Oh, and I get a ski to boot. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> it's a win for me. You yes. know, I, I spent $5,000 on my pass, but at least I'm isolated from COVID. You know, but that's, that's what you're finding is that people are trying to get to those areas. And if you look at what Airbnb has done, people want those rural getaways. Right. Like, I want to go hang out in a yurt in the middle of the woods by myself. Yes. You know, cell phones aren't allowed. Or I want to rent an Airstream up here in Taos. Yes. And I want to look at the stars and I'm not bothered. You know, and that makes people feel good. And so there's, there's a change in that dynamic. It's not like I want to go to the hotel or I want to check out the city. It's like, well, now if I'm not going to cities and I'm spreading myself out, how can data especially big right. data, tell us about what these habits of people are doing and what they prefer now that life circumstances have actually changed. Yeah, because uh, big data is going to help them be able to decide exactly what consumers are looking for. And it's more than the article talks about it is because all they were using um, the internet for was for social media campaigns, you know, marketing. That marketing. was about it. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, okay, they go to our website, we retarget them with ads, da 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 da. Hopefully they'll click on it and then, you know, hotels.com's hitting you up. Maybe or, the guy books it. Yeah, exactly. So now being able to actually take the data and then understand, oh, this person did go to Tulum and they did stay in an eco uh, friendly hotel. Well, maybe we, you know, then, then the cool part about this is you're going to see Marriott, Hilton's, all, all the big wigs. Yeah you know, they're going to turn around and say, well, maybe we should make our hotels more eco-friendly. Yeah, or we need to start making more decisions on big data. Because you're seeing that now with uh, <clears throat> when you go to a hotel, they're asking you if you would like to, you know, have your sheets changed and every yeah, single day. they're like, day. put this thing on the door if you actually want them changed. Right, yeah, you know? exactly. And what's uh, what's interesting about this entire thing, I'm trying to collect my thoughts because they're all over the place, <laughs> is that the, the data itself is observational. It's completely reactive. So they're, re- they're reacting to the industry. Yes. So human beings already reacted to COVID. 
and then they're being reactive to them reacting to COVID. Yeah, but I mean, when you look at when you look at uh, the tourist industry, it's like, what do we do? You know, okay, we have a virus. Like, I mean, some of the hotels went and um, were more responsive and understood that people want to have a safe. I mean, you still have but business, but travel. it's not just hotel. What about the the people? around the hotels or around resorts that oh, make their yeah. money from tourists. Yes. They got creamed, just yes, absolutely yeah. destroyed. Yeah, all the employees and then that ability to be able to be safe with your employees yeah. with COVID because you don't want to give it to the guests. No, you don't. But you know, cruise ships, probably the worst. Cruise ships cruise ships are tough. So cruise ships have always, they've been a nightmare. Yeah. You know, for a lot of different outbreaks, <laughs> you know. They were the, I, yeah, they're like the OG. The, <laughs> cruise ships are going to destroy the world. Yeah, cruise ships will destroy the world. We're going to get some world. weird disease. <laughs> it's going to happen on a cruise ship. Why is my leg growing a lung? That doesn't look right. Oh. Oh, I was on Carnival. <laughs> yeah, I was on Carnival Cruises. The, uh, no, but the, the, the gist of it is, is that they've taken this reactionary data and what would have been more beneficial in right. terms of their big data analysis is if they actually got proactive information from the people. Yes. What are your habits? What are your behaviors? What are you planning to do now that you have COVID? What are your fears about it? And then it's like, how is that affecting your travel plans? Mm, yeah. And, 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 you know, restaurants, they talk about that too, how they're changing, you know, so you need like a bigger area, put space, you have to space the tables apart, maybe put people in booths, what? make sure you have airflow, <laughs> what eating diff- outside. Is the eating book. outside is insane. You ready? What difference does it make for COVID if I'm sitting outside of the building eating in the cold with some sort of propane burner, yeah. keeping me warm or me sitting inside with the tables and have them spread out. What, what difference well, does that no, make? You actually, this is funny. Cause I, I was, so like I, I was looking in New York and they had these patios and they have plastic. Yeah. So you've took, you were, you were inside. <laughs> that was a bigger area. You've made it a smaller, smaller area. And you've confined the airflow. And, and you've confined the airflow. But the worst part is what is the propane doing to me? Yeah, is it worse a, than, than getting a... It's just burning off in there, you know what I mean? I'm a, I'm inhaling whatever I mean, you, byproduct uh, comes from it. You had COVID. I think I had it back in March. I don't know, but... Um, oh, why don't we just tell the world about my health problems, <laughs> don't we? Yeah. No, but I mean, every million <laughs> people that's fine. have. Yeah, go ahead. But I mean, you have a 99.98% chance to survive this flu. So stop <laughs> sticking people in tents, you know what I mean? I just don't understand that. I, I get I don't, it. I, it's I, illogical. I understand the mask. I understand the six... I mean, I mean flus are way down, the regular yeah. flu. But where's the data that tents work better? Yeah, exactly. This, there the, we go. What we see is this reactionary world to, you know, the service industry, to tourism. Right. You know? And so when they start looking at the data, they should be like, crap, that actually is not, it's not, it's doing nothing. I mean, how, how, who are these politicians to make these decisions without looking at data? Well, they're not looking at any data. No. You know? So if, that's a good point. Politicians are followers, Right. right. So when you start looking at, you know, hopefully, you know, some, they try to be leaders, but they have to listen to the public, right? They're right. voted into power. So they're essentially a follower. You know, they're a, a sounding board. So if they're using data, which comes from the people, yes. and that's telling them how to do things proactively, that's going to make a massive difference in how we make these decisions rather than right. making them on a hunch or saying that we should be intense because that's a different you know, COVID's not as, you know, it's not going to attack us in our, our tent eating space rather than us eating indoors. Right. Which is just an indoor outdoor scenario. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right? That's that, that part has not, has not made sense to me. Yeah. So if we want to really look to, you know, towards what people's behaviors are and what data and health says, the tourism industry can combine all those things together in data sets. And if they really want to enhance their data sets, they can buy proactive data. Right. And they can survey people, eco-tourists, any type of person that wants any sort of experience can be found on Tartle. Yes. And you can ask those people to share that data to your company. You know, you compensate them for it, but you're going to have even greater compensational benefits from finding those tourisms. Yeah. And then knowing, you know, I mean, just imagine if you could know exactly what um, your these people that say they want to go on a trip in the next six months. Yeah. And then slowly as it gets in that six months time. How much money have you saved? Yes. How much are you planning to spend? Yes. How many people? What do you want to do? Yeah, exactly. Holy crap, you have all the information in front yes. of you. There's no more imagination. Right. You're just getting hammered with truth. And you're like, wow, this is great. Maybe you in the tourism industry find a new sort of niche. Because how many ads do we accidentally click on? All the that time. That shows a tent. All the time. So now you're getting, so, oh, okay. Oh, I know they're going, they looked up flight information and they're wanting to go to Malaysia. Oh, okay, perfect. You know, and then next thing you know, they accidentally click on this hotel or and look they at, didn't even look mean at it. Us. We're and clicking. now we're marketing. 
Look at us. We're clicking on stuff about like Cebu in the Philippines. And then yes. we're getting ads for like islands in the Philippines. Like, <laughs> what is this nonsense? You know what I mean? <laughs> Where we're looking at it in a business perspective. Yeah. But they're hammering us with tourism. But they're ads. hammering us with tourism. Yeah, exactly. It's just so funny how. It's just backwards. You know, advertising is so reactive. Yes. Even the whole world of big data right now is so reactive. Let's take the proactive approach. Mm -hmm. We're reactive to climate change. We're reactive to politics. We're reactive to everything. We're constantly in a world of putting out fires. Fight and flight. I'm so jacked up. We need to start being <laughs> proactive yeah, about proactive. these things. We need to be proactive with the data from proactive people. So how can they be proactive with Turtle? Easy. You go to Turtle. You click on Get Started. And as a buyer, right. you can choose. You're like, ooh, let's look at what data is available for tourism. What are people's behaviors and preferences? Oh, wait a minute. Can I combine some of these pieces of data? Sure, you can. Let's make a bespoke data set just for Hilton, mm, yes. okay? Just for Tulum, uh, Mexico. Right. And let's do that. And then I can go specifically get data from ecotourists or people that have those preferences, whatever no, I that love might that. be. And then if someone wants to sell their data and help humanity, how could they do that? Oh, it's the same process. So instead of signing up as a buyer on the turtle marketplace, right. I'm going to start waving around. <laughs> I feel like this is, this is adding to the whole thing. You can go on to turtle.co and you can click on get started and sign up as a seller. And then you can choose those preferences of things that you want to put your data and time and work into and then get compensated for, for sharing that information. Only the things that you think are good to you. And we'll also come in and suggest things that you should be looking at, right? That may be, you know, higher value or something that, you know, may be, you know, something that you'd be interested in. It's better than an ad because we're trying to say, are you interested in getting paid for sharing about this? It's not, are you interested in looking at something so you can pay others? You know what right. I mean? But I'm worried, I'm worried about my privacy if I sign up. You don't have to worry about your privacy. We take all the best standards that you could possibly do in terms of encryption and PCI standards from a financial standpoint. And if you look at PCI, it's how they store credit cards properly. We keep all that stuff completely anonymous, completely locked down. We are the data bank for you. You store it with us, but you're the only one that has a key to let that thing go. So as a data seller... You choose to be as anonymous as you want, and you choose to control, withdraw, or deposit that data on your own time. So you have total control. You have total control. It's not for us to control. It's your information. You choose what you want to do with it. I'm not going to tell you how to drive your own car. Right, exactly. Yeah, we're, we're not a typical. No, we are atypical, <laughs> you know, and we're pushing towards our B Corp sort of certification. We're a public benefit corp in the state of Delaware. We're in this for you, not for us. I love that. I have my own Tartle account. Right. You think I don't want to be a part yeah, of it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, it's like, well, obviously, you know, we work for the company, but it works for us. And right. if it didn't work for us, why would we give it to somebody else? Yes, exactly. So Foolish. sign up, tartle.co. Yeah, T-A-R-T-L-E dot C-O. Perfect. Thanks, Alex. Thank you. Thank you for listening to TurtleCast with your hosts, Alexander McKegg and Jason Rigby, where humanity steps into the future and source data defines the path. What's your data worth?